What's up? My name is Eric Butler. This channel is called Report and Opine. I am back and from Business Insider. Making $100,000 in New York City feels like only $36,000, according to new study. Here are the top 10 cities where your money goes further. And I said this a long time ago. If you don't do at least a quarter million in New York, you're basically living below the poverty line. And they want it that way. They've done it intentionally. They charge you 3.5% city tax on top of the state and the federal. They won't clean up the trash. The cops still don't come. It's obviously become a playground for the rich. And that's been going on for decades. It's not new. But it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. They want to intentionally gut the middle class. So anybody who lives there is going to be dependent on the government. Or they're going to live in a penthouse. There's going to be no in between. So you're going to have your junkies, you know, self-vaccinating under the Williamsburg Bridge with their fentanyl test strips. And then you're going to have the, you know, media and and political elite and, and, you know, high power people. But there's going to be nothing in between. So everybody is dependent. There's going to be a bunch of people living in NYCHA houses with, with no heat in the winter and rats all over the place. And they're going to, you know, be asked to thank the government for a dilapidated building that they let them stay in. So they say New York City ranked the lowest for cost of living on a six figure salary in a study of 76 cities. Memphis, Tennessee ranked highest, boasting a buying power of more than 86,000. Seven cities in Texas rounded out the top 10, while places like LA and Boston were at the bottom. And uh, that makes sense because I think notably that's where the Daily Wire went to somewhere in Tennessee when they left California, so they can look at the numbers and say, okay, well, this is where we're going to be more efficient money-wise, even though I think Ben Shapiro himself lives in Florida while the rest of the guys live in Tennessee. I don't know. doesn't matter. That's a completely different story. A dollar doesn't go very far in New York City, but in places like El Paso, a six-figure salary can stretch much further than many of the largest metropolitan areas in the country. Yes, and they, they do that on purpose, right? And like I said, they hollow out the middle class, which, and this isn't really connected, but they also hollow out the middle of a political debate. They hollow out the middle ground of policy. So they will point the finger at you if you don't agree with everything and call you an extremist, and nobody will ever come to the middle. It's the same thing that they do with people. Is that there's no middle ground. There's no middle class, and they want it that way. Because obviously... They can keep control of the people who are dependent and they can villainize the people who don't agree with every single thing. And there's no, there's quite literally, I mean, you can, I, I bring this up all the time, but you can look at a guy like Don Lemon, who's going to pair at 99 out of a hundred, you know, establishment talking points. But if he doesn't do all 100, then they're going to be mad at him. There is literally no room for the most minicule amount of dissent, which I guess really has nothing to do with hollowing out the middle class. I'm just saying. They get rid of the middle, right? That's their goal, is to have everything in these extremes. And that's why New Yorkers are, uh, that's why they're paying, you know, they're paying through the roof for every single little thing, and they can get no help, right? They, you pay four or $5,000 to live in a shoebox. Like I said, the cops don't show up. Garbage everywhere, rats, crime. But somehow they've tricked people that it's worth it. And I found out the hard way that it is not. According to a new cost of living study by financial technology company Smart Asset, $100,000 uh, 100, salary in New York City leaves workers with what feels like just $36,000, the lowest of nearly 80 cities analyzed by the financial advisory company. The study looked at cities from Buffalo to Los Angeles to find where a dollar stretches the furthest using the Smart Asset Paycheck Calculator. Okay, I guess that's an ad or I don't know and Council for Community and Economic Research data to find an estimate of purchasing power after accounting for living expenses. Each city was analyzed using a salary of $100,000. Here are the top 10 for cost of living. St. Louis, Missouri, three-way tie for uh, San Antonio, Fort Worth, and Arlington. Then Houston, wow, a lot in Texas. Moore, Texas, Lubbock, Texas, Corpus Christi, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, El Paso, Texas, and Memphis, Tennessee. So it's basically everything in Texas and then Tennessee. And a shout out Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I think they're pretty good too. I don't know how they didn't end up on this list because things seem to be pretty affordable there from the little time that I spent in South Dakota. But this is crazy. They're basically telling you to move to Texas because even while most New Yorkers are fleeing to Florida, but they have, they have the extra cash. So if they're going to save themselves a little bit of money by moving to Florida then that's a step in the right direction. They don't have to go all the way to Texas, especially if they want to do their 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 weirdo establishment, you know, political talking points are going to be 
probably a little bit better received in Florida than Texas, right? I mean, Florida is by no stretch of the imagination, a, you know, a liberal haven, but I think it's a little bit more tolerant, as some might say, than a place like Texas, where <laughs> they're, they're going to ask you, you know, you know, if you drive through Texas with a California license plate, they're going to ask you a whole bunch of questions. So anyways, um, New York City is obviously absurdly expensive for absolutely nothing. There doesn't really even seem to be an upside. Now, if you if you got the money, if you're making a million dollars a year, then fine, so be it. It's, it's a fun place to live for a little bit. But if you're going to just be, you know, trying to keep your head above water, it's just totally not worth the price of admission. Unless, of course, you're just you're from there and you know nothing else, so this is just the way of life. I moved there from San Francisco, which arguably, uh, I'm surprised, isn't at the bottom of this list as well because it's incredibly expensive and you have to walk over needles and poop. But that's a different story. So thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and, of course, subscribe.